You probably clicked on this video because the title sounds unique and new, but that in and of itself is a huge problem. The internet seems to have a limitless surplus of trading content being spat out all the time by these gurus promising to teach you how to trade, and each one of them is selling you a different course or mentorship revolving around their own personal convoluted amalgam of baseless ICT confluences. The very idea of learning to trade is flawed at its core because it implies that you're pursuing some static goal, and once you learn how to trade once and for all, it's a skill that you'll be able to use to make money indefinitely. That's not the case at all, and the proof is in the very nature of markets themselves. Alpha decays an axiomatic principle in quant finance. It describes the idea that when a strategy is widely adopted, the market adjusts and the inefficiency that created the alpha in the first place disappears. The truth is that markets constantly evolve, and finding alpha is immeasurably more difficult than any guru tries to convince you, but I doubt they even know that in the first place. I posted my first ever TikTok video about 9 months ago and told this truth. It got over 100,000 likes, but most of the comments came from people infuriated with the message of the video. As I've continued to post educational videos regarding math, derivatives, arbitrage, and trading in general, I've exposed a few more trading influencers scams and continually been met with comments to the effect of, you haven't studied this person's strategy enough to say that it doesn't work. I've backtested this person's strategy manually over, you know, insert some ridiculously small sample size trades and proved that it works. I'm going to address all these comments once and for all in this series. If you watched my TikTok, then you know that in this series, we're going to be implementing trading guru strategies programmatically. Not only am I going to convert their strategies to code and backtest them over thousands of trades to get accurate performance statistics, I'm going to teach you how to do the same. For whatever reason, I received a bunch of comments on the announcement video for this series from people claiming that it's impossible to implement discretion in a programmatic trading strategy. These people confuse hard coding trading rules with programmatic trading in general. Later in this series, we'll use artificial neural networks to emulate discretionary attributes of trading strategies and eliminate certain hard coded rules, but we won't do that just yet. In this video, I'm going to explain how I watched one YouTube video from a day trading guru who you guys suggested named Justin Whirlin, and in just a few hours, implemented it programmatically, backtested it over thousands of trades, and got some reliable performance metrics to see how the thing really works. Typically, when you implement a trading strategy programmatically, it starts as a novel idea with really well-defined rules, but in our case today, we're starting from the words of a YouTube guru in a kind of ambiguous YouTube video, so step one is deciphering and parsing what he's saying from conversational English more into pseudocode and the logic that we're going to need to eventually implement in the program. In case you were wondering, this is the YouTube video of his that I watched. The first pillar of a programmatic trading strategy is the data pre-processing. So that's the features that we want to derive from the raw market data itself. So we have to think about what market data we start with. And he just looks at charts. So all he has is open, high, low, and close. And you might say, oh, well, sometimes he has, you know, insert some random in indicator, the RSI. Well, that's just based off of price and time. It's just a formula that, that's derived from open, high, low, close data, right? So this is all the data he starts with. He doesn't start with any like macroeconomic data or any like esoteric weird data. He just starts with open, high, low, and close prices, but he uses two different time frames. He uses a high time frame for detecting liquidity, liquidity. So he uses that to find high time frame fair value gaps and high time frame swing highs and lows. Then he also uses low time frame data for some other things. Then we transform that market data in order to find these things, the high time frame liquidity, and then the low time frame manipulation leg. So that's when we sweep liquidity. It's the leg from swing low to high or high to low that swept that liquidity. And then we look at the low time frame fair value gaps. And if they become inverted, then we look at low time frame inverted fair value gaps. That's all derived from low and high time frame open, high, low, close data. But that's all we take for raw market data. And this is what we have to transform it into programmatically. The next pillar is signal generation. So the actual trade setup. In his case, these are the attributes of the signal. We have a sweep of high time frame liquidity. We see that on a lower time frame. Then we identify a low time frame manipulation leg. That's the leg that swept the liquidity from swing low to high or high to low. Then we identify all the fair value gaps within that manipulation leg. So we have to do that retroactively in our program, or at least that's how I chose to do it when I implemented it. And then we monitor for low time frame inversions of low time frame manipulation leg fair value gaps. So any manipulation leg fair value gap, a fair value gap that was created during the manipulation leg in the direction of the manipulation leg, we monitor to see if that's inverted. If that's the case, then we fire the signal to go long or to go short, but we don't go yet because the third pillar is signal processing and execution. So this is how we know how and when to actually act on the signals. So what we do here is if a fair value gap is inverted from the manipulation leg, we check our arrays of high time frame liquidity for nearby liquidity. And by nearby, he just uses the term nearby, which is very qualitative, but we need something quantitative because it's a quantitative trading strategy that we're trying to implement. So we say within some user-defined 
parameter percentage of the 14 day rolling average true range. We need high time frame liquidity within that range of the entry price. The last pillar is the risk protocol. That's take profit and stop loss in our case here. It's very simple. So once we uh, verify that there's high time frame liquidity, uh, within our target range then we first check that the rr of the trade is within our parameters so one to one reward to risk or better and if it's not then we adjust the stop loss once this is done we go ahead and actually execute the trade and we set our take profit at the high time frame liquidity from those arrays that we've been storing and we put our stop loss just past the high time frame liquidity with a small buffer or if we don't have high time frame liquidity to set the stop loss just beyond within our risk parameters then we set the stop loss arbitrarily just to make the rr what it's supposed to be i took that logic that we outlined there and then i implemented it programmatically in trading views pine language i didn't use python or c++ to do this because i want it to be easily democratizable you can literally just copy paste to this code into your trading view pine editor and use it yourself okay let's go ahead and apply this to the chart i built in a lot of ui components just to make it easier to see what we're doing but what i think is cooler and more relevant are the inputs that i built in so the user can pick their high time frame that's the one that is used to detect liquidity so we use the 15 minute time frame so that's the time frame that we're using to detect for example these high time frame for value apps or these swing highs and lows that count as resting liquidity. Then we have the low time frame that we use to detect the manipulation leg and the manipulation leg fair value gaps, uh, the pivot lengths for detecting the swing highs and lows, just some cosmetic adjustments, colors and things, bars to highlight after sweep. This is important. This defines how long after a liquidity sweep that manipulation leg is eligible to trigger a trade entry. Because for example, if liquidity is swept and then we chop around or continue down or continue up, but don't sweep any more resting liquidity, then those fair value gaps from the initial manipulation leg aren't still valid for a trade entry. This is another cosmetic thing, just how many previous manipulation legs we want to plot the fair value gaps for. This is where the user can tune the percentages of the 14 day average true range that we use to look in for liquidity. So for example, if you look at this short trade, you can see that the take profit is set right here at the top of this high time frame fair value gap. And the reason that we took that trade is because first we check to make sure that there's resting liquidity in the direction of the trade within 50% of the 14 day average true range. You can also set the max distance to opposite liquidity where we'd set the stop loss. And if there's no resting liquidity within this percentage of the average true range then we set it either at this percentage of the average true range or to make the risk to reward one to one if that's not there then i also added a stop buffer so we don't set our stop directly on the liquidity if there is some we actually set it one percent of the average true range above or below that to add a small buffer let's zoom in and look at this long example here so we came down and we swept this high time frame fair value up from the 15 minute time frame um, and then we created this manipulation leg, which is highlighted in purple. During this manipulation leg, we created these two blue fair value gaps in the direction of the manipulation leg. Then we came up, uh, bounced off of this uh, high time frame fair value gap, inverted this manipulation leg fair value gap, and then entered a long trade. We set our take profit at this resting liquidity here from this previous high, and we set our stop to make the risk to reward one to one because there was no resting liquidity closer. Now that you have an idea of how it works, let's look at the properties for when we backtest. I'm trying to sort of emulate the day trade behavior of using a prop from account and then risking 1% of it. So setting your stop loss such that you risk 1% of your total, total equity. So I think this is a pretty close approximation. Use a $100,000 account. Each trade is 90% of equity, but our stop losses are so tight that that constitutes, what is this? Yeah, you know, half a percent of total equity about no pyramiding. So we're not taking concurrent orders. I'll give them a small benefit by saying no commission, no slippage. Okay, this is what you guys have been waiting for. Let's do 2015 to 2025. This might time out. I'm not sure. Okay, this time now, let's try like 2018 to present day. Let's go 2018 Jan 1 to present day. Okay, from 2018 to 2025, the strategy returned 107%, which might sound good, right? It looks like it's a profitable strategy, which technically it is. It, it isn't a losing strategy, but until you realize that just holding the NASDAQ 100 would have yielded 311% returns. That's nearly three times the profit by doing absolutely nothing. Now let's talk risk. The Sharpe ratio is 0.165. This tells us how much return we're getting per unit risk. Usually anything below one is weak, below 0.5 is generally uninvestable, and this is nearly zero, so this is terrible. The Sortino ratio is 0.333. This is similar to the Sharpe ratio, but it only looks at downside risk. This is still terrible. So yeah, this strategy made money, but so did the market, and a lot more. With way less stress, way less risk, and way more reward. This backtest took place over seven years, and it has 3,500 trades in it. This should show you that a couple cherry-picked examples that you see on the guy's YouTube channel doesn't show you the actual long-term performance. For example, I could show you this and only post that.
or this one right here. That looks pretty nice, right? But when we actually consider the long-term performance, almost all of these will fall apart. In the next video, we're not just gonna copy a strategy blindly. We're gonna pick one, tear it apart, and try to optimize it. Parameter tuning, robust entry logic, and we'll try to implement a risk protocol that performs better under volatility. So if you guys wanna stop following blindly and start engineering real strategies, I'll see you in the next one.